next one is a very interesting uh, research that uh, Alan Mallard uh, and uh, Sarah Bowen, both of them out of the University of Washington State, um, established and, and researched, which they call uh, surfing the urge. And what they did is they brought in 83 students who were smokers that desperately wanted to stop smoking, desperately, but couldn't. So they told the students, don't smoke for 12 hours uh, before the experiment, and then come into the experiment room, um, and they did it in several sessions, with your unopened pack of cigarette and your lighter. And so in comes the, come the students with the expectation that, oh, at long last, after 12 hours, I'm going to have my smoke. And then uh, the experimenter says, OK, take out the box of cigarette. And they were already ready to uh, rip the cellophane apart. OK, stop. Look at your box for two minutes. Examine it. Don't do anything. Just write down your feelings about this box of cigarettes. Okay, now take the cellophane apart. And they're all excited and all kind of eager to have their smoke. Stop. For two minutes, look at the box and write down your feelings about that box. Okay, take out a cigarette. Tap it three times. Okay, stop. Look at the cigarette. And so on, it went for one and a half hours. <laughs> step by step by step by step. And at the beginning, the experimenter was reporting that he could see the anxiety and the craving and the anxiousness in their responses. They were literally shaking. But over time, the craving disappeared, subsided. So what they found is that by th that craving actually is like a wave. And what they found is, again, looking at those dopamine neurons in our nucleus accumbens, they fire for a certain period of time, and then they die down. So if you're able to ride the wave, the craving will subside. And so after a few days of doing this experiment, they let those students go, and a year later they connected again with the students. And they found that 35% of those students that took the surfeit urge intervention were still not smoking. A year later, only after doing this exercise for about a week. They did it on their own for a week? Yeah. And then, and, and they had to write down, they got the instruction, write down how you're feeling about it, and ride the wave. Uh, versus 15% in the control group that didn't do the surf the urge. So the recommendation is, if you have, a, you have a craving, whether it is Okay, we'll let him, uh, we'll let him fix that. Uh, whether it is for a piece of chocolate or for that extra drink that you think you should not have or whatever the craving is about. If you can manage to ride it and resist it for not a very long time, you will be able to um, conquer it. The craving will subside. And I've actually tried it. The craving for a, a, a sweet something, a cookie or something, was a result of an internal signal of a decrease in my blood sugar that my body was sending to my brain. And without even knowing what happened and how it happened, I was in the kitchen and my hand was inside the cookie jar, so to speak. But then I said, okay. I took my hand out and I sat down on the couch for a few minutes and I said, I'm not going to have that cookie now. And after a few minutes, indeed the craving had subsided. So again, I recommend you try this if there is a particular habit that is craving driven that you're trying to overcome. 
And the last one is the accountability partner. This is a study that, a survey rather, that they did at Brigham Young University uh, in, in Utah in, in the 19, uh, early 1990s, 93 I think it was. Uh, so they brought a group of students into the lab uh, that they all shared the same goal to achieve. And they divided them into five groups. The first group, they said, uh, do you think this goal is a good idea? Oh yeah, sure, I think it's a good idea. Okay, write it down. This goal is a good idea. The second group, they said, in addition to writing it's a good idea, write down if you are really intending on achieving this goal. They wrote down. The third group, they said, okay, in addition to that, also put down a plan together, write it down, and put down a due date by when you're planning to achieve this goal. Group number four did all these things, but also shared their intent to achieve that particular goal with friends and family. Sent them email, and again writing it down. And the last one uh, had to choose an accountability partner, somebody close to them, that they respect and like and have a close relationship with, somebody that cares about them and their well-being and have their interest in heart, at heart. And that accountability partner had to motivate them on the one hand, but also hold them accountable in case of lapses in willpower and lapses in behavior. Hey, you didn't do what you said you will do today. What's going on with you? And it was a person with whom they had this relationship that they can trust that um, they would hold their interest at heart. And here is what they found. The people that just wrote down, yeah, it's a good idea, 15% of them actually achieved the goal. The people who adopted or sought an accountability partner and worked with that person all the way through the experiment, 95% of them achieved their goal. So this accountability partner business is an extremely powerful uh, intervention, again, to help you achieve certain goals which are significant, challenging, I mean it's not trivial uh, goals that we're talking about, uh, where you will need that support from somebody you trust, respect, and they have your interest at heart, and they will have the courage to hold you accountable. So basically, these are the six interventions. In summary, develop your willpower muscle and be mindful of it when it would be at its peak and when it would be at its bottom. Adopt the mindfulness practice and mindfulness meditation. 30 minutes a day is all you need. And after eight weeks, I can vouch for myself, you will see a demonstrable effect of this meditation. Lay down the foundation of what it is you want to achieve. Be mindful of the habit loop if your goals are to do with habits. Uh, and surf the urge as well if they are to do with habits and craving. And the last one is adopt an accountability partner uh, that will help you achieve your goal. Uh, but I did want to ask you, of those six in interventions, which one resonates with you the most? Which ones can you say, you know what, I have this goal in mind, I will take this home and I will try and do it. Okay. Having somebody, maybe my wife or someone to <coughs> help me. Okay. Yeah, definitely accountability partner. I'll take the mindfulness. The mindfulness. It's really powerful, guys. I want to tell you. I've started that about five months ago, um, and it's really powerful. <laughs> you have to have the self-discipline to do 30 minutes a day every single day. But after two months, you will start seeing the difference. Uh, my friends, I, I've tried. The most I can do is 10 minutes, and before I know 
it, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, it's very hard. One of the most challenging things is to tell our brain what to do. We cannot tell it. We cannot control our thoughts. Our thoughts control us and not the other way around. Uh, but all mindfulness meditation um, guides and teachers will say it's absolutely normal. It will take time. And after a period of eight weeks of doing it consistently, you will start seeing the difference. In the UCLA one, they have meditations for three minutes, five minutes, 12 minutes, 90 minutes. So they say that even if in the middle of the day you are, in, you know, you are ahead of a meeting that is important to you and um, sit down and do just the three minutes, close the door, do the three minutes, and you'll feel the difference. I mean, what I do is, uh, I do it in, you know, in the evenings before I go to bed. Uh, you have to do it, ideally sit it um, upright uh, and, and not, not too relaxed because you'll fall asleep very quickly. Uh, but I am I'm absolutely sold uh, about this and it's gaining popularity at, at uh, a huge pace. Any other ideas? Yuri, it's mostly a question, um, as you've met other groups, are there one, two, or three of the topics you've raised that are most foreign to them? In other words, it's a surprise or their self-awareness of that topic is really absent because of the life we live. Um, Could you have an, do you have an observation? Uh, I, I'm, I am building kind of my own mental database on how things resonate with the audience. Uh, the fact that you can develop your willpower uh, People are not so familiar with that concept and what you can do to actually develop your willpower. Um, surf the urge is also something that people may have not heard uh, before and, and some audiences like that particular notion. Um, but the ones that resonate the most, I must admit, um, accountability partner, uh, mindfulness, as well as laying the foundation. Unless, again, if they're stuck with a habitual uh, goal that they want to achieve, either conquering an undesirable or adopting a new one, then um, the stuff about the habit loop uh, would, would resonate with them. And I would definitely recommend that book that I have in uh, here uh, by Charles Duhigg uh, in the reference sheet. So, and with that, I'd like to really thank you. I know that I've taken you know, a lot of your evening time unplanned. <laughs> I know that many of you uh, would have uh, preferred to be at home already by now, but I wanted to thank you very much for the time and attention. Thank you very much. So Yuri, first of all, thank you very much. I think everyone will have enjoyed the, the topic you brought forward. Um, next year we need you to do this before the golf game. <laughs> Um, we, we now know how good we can get and maybe some of the habits we can learn to get there. But we really do want to thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. I think it's been refreshing and quite a very good topic for us to wake up. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.